Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Yes, this is a beautiful, a great day. A day like no other day. A day that God created and gave to us to be glad and rejoice in it. I thank God that uh, he gave us the opportunity, all of us, by his grace, not as I'm doing, to have the opportunity to live everything we are doing and assemble in this place of worship to rejoice with one another, <coughs> to rejoice with the whole host of heaven, to rejoice with the whole of Christendom, who are tonight commemorating or keeping watch because our Savior was born and because our Lord will come. Some people are going to worship tomorrow. Some people are going to worship tomorrow. And that's uh, Christmas Day proper. But to, tonight, we have come to keep watch with the shepherd who watched their flock by night about 2,000 years ago. They didn't know what was going to happen because no man knew even though prophecies had been made by different prophets, but Isaiah was uh, the one that prophesied most about the coming of the Messiah. And while he was prophesying, he was giving signs of things that were going to take place. But most importantly, it was a prophecy about the situation of mankind who had for many years piled under the weight of sin, who had toiled for many years expecting help because there was no help from anyone. And by the way, you know that the message of the prophets, all of them, starting from prophets like Elijah, Elisha, Jeremiah, Amos, Hosea, Habakkuk, Nahum, up to Malachi. They were people that were foretelling what God was going to do at a particular point in time. But nobody knew exactly when that was going to happen. And they, after the prophecy of uh, Malachi, we are meant to know that there was a time, a very lengthy period of time, of about 400 years on earth, within which there was no prophecy. No prophet arose. Nobody was in that situation of the prophets prophesying, telling the world what was going to happen. So, the world was in darkness. The world was in darkness. And if we look at what we, we read uh, in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, 2 to 7, it said, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. People who walk in darkness. You know, there are situations in which you find yourself and you don't know anything that would happen. And that was the situation the world found itself. But Isaiah had prophesied a long time ago that suddenly these people that were in darkness would see a great light. And those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. It's like when you go into your house, of course, Nobody turns on the light, all the lights and go out. You turn off your lights, and then when you come into your house, it's usually dark. Then you go to the switch and put on the switch, and then the light shines. But it's not that kind of light that uh, Isaiah was talking about. He was talking about 
spiritual light, an enlightenment that will come from no other person than God himself. And of course, if you look at uh, the scripture, you find so many places that God was described as the light. The light, Jesus himself, as the light that comes to enlighten the world. So, in this context, it was a great light shining into the world of darkness. That was what would happen. And with that would be joy. Joy will follow because they rejoice before as with joy as the harvest time. After you have planted your crops, there is usually a period of, uh, maybe don't call it complete starvation, but you don't eat as much as you eat when you have harvested the crops. So there is a, a period of, let me say, not feeding very well. But then when it is the harvest time, when you are going to the farms and bringing back the crops, bringing back the yams, the cassava, the rice, the, all these things, there is feeding in a way that is special. So, so there is a special joy that attends the harvest. And this was the, 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 the imagery that the prophet was using to describe what would be when this great thing will happen to the earth. There will be joy as at the harvest time. As people exult with divine plunder, for the yoke of their body and the bars across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors you have broken as on the day of Midian. So, so it also used, uses the measure of people who are under special bondage. And suddenly this bondage is lifted off their shoulders. There is always great rejoicing when that thing happens. So throughout <clears throat> This uh, chapter of uh, Isaiah 9 is foretelling what would happen. And what, why would these things be? And uh, coming down, it gives us the reason. It says here, For a child has been born for us. A child has been born for us. A son is given to us. And the authority rests upon his shoulder. And then he begins to give the names of this child. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God. Ever, everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. Right now, we live in a world that is struggling a world that is struggling because this world, even though the, the, the Messiah has come, even though the Prince of Peace has come into this world, but it's like this world has turned its back <coughs> to this Prince of Peace. And as a result, this peace is eluding the world. But I thank God that God is still the same person who has not changed and he will never change. And what he has done in the past for people who trusted him, he is going to do for those who are trusting him now. And I thank God that we have come in that frame of mind, knowing that God is the ultimate. Knowing that God has every power in his hands. Knowing that God, to him, all authority belongs. He has all authority. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince. Not any kind of prince, but the prince of peace. And so at this time of Christmas, even though we are celebrating the fact that Jesus was given to us, he came as a baby, was born in Bethlehem by this humble family, the family of Joseph and Mary. In the gospel lesson, we read how they traveled to their home country for census because there was a census going on and Mary 
and the, 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 the husband, Joseph, were going on that uh, trip like every other person. So that's the story of the first account of Christmas, where Jesus was born as a baby and led in a manger. And there was one thing that is very, very important in that lesson we read. That thing is that there was no room for them in the manger. There was no room in, a, in all the hotels. And so they found a, a place in the manger. And this manger happens to be a place where people kept animals. So the, the first people with whom Christmas was celebrated was animals, animals, because there was no room for Jesus in the inn. The inn is a place where visitors, travelers stayed before they continued on their journey. But because of poverty, because Joseph wasn't rich, he couldn't afford to pay for an inn, and so they found room in the nature. And this was what happened 2,000 years ago. There was no room for the Prince of Peace. There was no room for God. That's, that's just the story. There was no room for God. The people were going about their businesses. Everybody was minding his own business. The rich people found accommodation, but this family didn't. But unknown to the world, the child that was going to be born was God himself. And so God visited the world, the world he created. Everybody was busy doing one thing or the other. And they didn't look around and say, look at this pregnant woman. Are we going to help? Nobody helps. And then she, she was born, she, she went there and then gave birth to a baby. No room. But do you ask the question, has the world found room for Jesus today? Has the world found room for Jesus? If you go to all the churches tonight, and maybe tomorrow, you'll find scanty people, scanty people who came to worship. And it's, tomorrow is Jesus' birthday. He's birthday. That's, what, that's the meaning of Christmas. He's birthday. And you know how you celebrate that day of children? When children of uh, where to do parents celebrate their bad day, you know that something is happening in the neighborhood. Because everybody comes, people coming with their, their big cars and their, with their families, with the children and everything. You know, and everybody is rejoicing. There is food, there is merriment. Because somebody is celebrating his bad day. But there was something that happened sometime. There was something that happened sometime where a family went out and after christening and every other thing, it was the day a child was celebrating his birthday. And when they came back, everybody went into the room. People were dancing, people were eating, people were drinking and so on and so forth. Nobody thought about the baby. Nobody thought about the baby. People were doing all kinds of things. Food were flowing, drinks and everything. The baby was in the car. Under the sun. By the time they discovered that the baby was not there, it was late. But it, it, it is what we are doing now different from that? What is the one world doing different than that? If you go all over the world, there is festivity everywhere going on, going up and down. People doing shopping, every kind of thing happening. And then you ask them, what is happening? <laughs> Christmas is happening. What's the meaning of Christmas? The baby was born to the world and given to the world. And it is the baby's birthday we are talking about. 
And people who's, who, who, it is not, it is not their bad day. Remember? It is a baby's birthday. It's, it's, it's remembering that a child, God gave the world his only son into this world. And so when, if we are going to be celebrating, we are going to be celebrating this baby. We are going to, like the, 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 the wise men who came and brought gifts to Jesus. They gave gifts to Jesus because a child was born. And so that's what the world is supposed to be doing, giving gifts to Jesus. And you, it may not be physical gifts. It is going to a place and sitting down and then worshipping this child. Because this is not an ordinary child. It's the, it's the, child, it's the son of God we're talking about. And what does this, this child, what does he want from you? Is he asking you for clothes? Is he asking you for money? What is he asking for? Because he's God, he deserves your worship. That was why the wise men came and worshipped Jesus. The shepherds came also and worshipped Jesus. <laughs> and today, what are we doing? Are we worshipping Jesus? Are we worshiping Jesus? But I'm, I'm saying this because Jesus is going to come again. He's not going to come again as a baby. That's the important thing. He's not going to come again as a baby. He's going to come back to this world as the judge. Because in our creed, we read, he will come to judge the living and the dead. That's what we are waiting for this time. So it's not, it's not, we can be lost in our uh, 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 confusion of understanding what Christmas actually means and think it is all about, uh, you know, spending all the money people have and don't, the ones they don't have, buying the whole world. That is good. Giving gifts is very good. But will it make you not to go to your place of worship? And then join in the worship. We were told that the, 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 the angels were singing when Jesus was born. And so we should even come and join the angels in singing melodious songs to this newborn king. <clears throat> but sometimes we find it are difficult to do. So I, I, I praise God and I thank God that you, this remnant, you were able to come. Because you are the people doing the right thing doing the right thing. Because the bad day belongs to Jesus and we are here to celebrate it with him, here in this worship. Jesus is no longer a baby. After he came to this earth, he went through the cross and died for you and I. And the, on the third day he rose again. <coughs> and on the day of ascension he ascended to heaven and is now at the right hand of uh, God. And so when he is looking down from heaven and looking at us and looking at the world he created and see how we are honoring him, he is God and he knows what to do with us who are awaiting his second coming. So Today is a day for us to rejoice. And then, in the gospel, let me read a place. It says, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around. These were the people that God chose to reveal the message of the birth of the Messiah, ordinary people in the field, shepherds. They were not rich people. They were not important people. They were not influential people. But God went there and sent an angel to inform them. The angel didn't go to Herod. The angel didn't go to uh, all the important people in the city. He went to these people, keeping watch over their flock by night. And when they saw the angel, fear came into them. But they just said to them, do not be afraid. I'm bringing good news of great joy for all the people. 
and bringing good news. So what happened is good news. And this good news is not for just one person. It is for all the world. It's for you. It's for me. To you is born this day in the city of David who is the Messiah, the Lord. The Messiah is the Savior. He is the Lord. Is Jesus your Messiah? Has he saved you? Is he your Lord? If he is your Lord, how are you treating your Lord? How are you treating your Lord? Is it by only voice of mouth? Does it go right deep into your heart? Do you mean it when you say that Jesus is Lord? The meaning of Lord is from it's not a nomenclature or a terminology that is used in this modern time. The lords were in those old days when you had kingdoms and when you had territories and you had masters over those territories to the extent that you would call them lord because they own you and own everything. The kings were addressed as lords because they owned kingdoms. And in the kingdom, they own the, the, the land, they own the people, they own even everything the man has or the woman has. And then you can call him Lord. And so we live in the kingdom of God, where God is the king, where God is the Lord, and he owns, in, in, in Psalm 24 verse 1, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's. And the all that is daring, including the people. So that's the definition of a Lord. And we call Jesus our Messiah, we call him our Lord, we call him our Master. Is it by word of mouth? Is he truly the Lord of your life? If he is the Lord of your life, he owns everything you have. He owns you, he owns your children, he owns your house, he owns your car, he owns your time. Because he's the Lord. And so we will understand the meaning of what we are saying. But the important thing is that his coming brought great joy for the world. And we thank God for remembering the world he created and sent them a, a Messiah who would save them. And who actually saved them? Who saved you? Who saved me? Saved us from sin? Saved us from the world? He saved us from the flesh. He saved us from everything. And therefore, we ought to give him back our loyalty completely, without reservation. That's what is expected of us. And anything short of that is not good enough. I thank God for a day like this, the day of Christmas. The day of Christmas we all will share in the joy of Christmas. And the joy of Christmas will be our portion, not only for this day, because every day, actually, Christmas, sometimes we think it's just one day. God didn't save us just for one day. He saved us for all the days of our life. He sent his son to us. And he saved us. And he saved us for all the days of our life. So every day should be a time to remember Christmas that Jesus came into the world. We should remember, not, not, not just occasions like this, because what he did for us is for all times and for all generations. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God on the highest. Glory to God on the highest. That's what the Bible says here. Glory to God on the highest. God should take the highest glory. That's what it means. There's nothing we should glorify more than God. He should take the highest glory because that is what is due to him. And then on earth, on earth, peace among those he favors. And where those people he favors, you and I, we are the favor of the Lord. And we shall remain favored all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So when we come 
forward this evening to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be doing it with the greatest thanksgiving in our hearts. Because God loved the world so much that he gave his only son to the extent that those who believe in him should not perish but have a eternal life. He came that we might have eternal life. Jesus came that we might have eternal life. <coughs> and then he says, seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto that. Every other thing. Seek first. Seek you first. The kingdom of God and its righteousness. Seek you first. It didn't say don't seek any other things. Seek. You will seek other things. You go to do your business. You do all kinds of things. Yes, God knows that you need them in order to survive. But he says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that should be our first priority. I know that tomorrow we are going to cook, we are going to eat, we are going to, you know, make merry and so on and so forth. But this, this is the first thing that you have done, which is seeking God's kingdom first. And every other thing will follow. Because God knows you need all those things. Sometimes we act like we are on our own. And uh, if God leaves us, we will survive. No, it's not true. Every day, every second, every minute we spend here on earth is gift given to us by God. And we should be, be grateful. So when you hear the things of God, don't just close your ears or say, let us go and do some other thing. No. Whenever you hear the name of God, you should treat that with the greatest and utmost respect. Glory to God in the highest. And then you have peace. Glory to God in the highest and you have peace. The world has not given God the highest glory and therefore we have no peace. If the world today will give God the highest glory and respect the name of God and respect to do everything God has told us, there will be peace in this world. This world can never have peace until they, they submit to the Prince of Peace. That's the message of Christmas. And I pray that God will bless you. God will continue to uh, uh, fight your battles. God will continue to uh, give you, because even, even when you didn't merit it, he gave you the best. For why we were you sinners? God sent Jesus Christ to die for us. While we were yet sinners, when we didn't have anything to recommend us, nothing to recommend us, he sent Jesus Christ to die for us. How much more will he do for us when we submit our lives to him? Very, very important. Hallelujah. And may God bless you. Bless your family. Bless your business. Bless your health. Especially as we go into 2016. This year has been so good for us. Mm -hmm. We started with it with God. And we, we committed our lives to God. And we handed everything to God. And God has taken care of us. And we have just one week left for us to go into another year. Are you thinking about that? Now we all stand. Every knee shall bow.